All right, so let's look at, where's the camera? So in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum, you are expected to know where they are according to the spectrum. Now looking at this, keep in mind, radio wave will have the longest wavelength, long wavelength, and the symbol for wavelength will be lambda, looks something like this. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have gamma rays. Gamma rays have short wavelength, okay, short wavelength. But if we ever ask you what type, which one has the most energy, it will be the gamma ray ones, okay? It will be the gamma ray ones. Think Hulk, okay? If you know anything about Hulk, he became Hulk by exposure to large amount of gamma rays. So, high energy. Now, in terms of how lights are produced, so let's quickly look through. You guys have read uh, I did ask you guys to read them and take and take some notes. Well, so what is what can you guys say light from in the incandescent? How does it work? How does light get produced by the process of incandescent? Yes. Good. So. When you heat up an object, it will produce a certain amount of light, okay? So how many of you have those stove, like at home where it's like a wire, a coil kind of wire stove? Like if you turn that on high, it glows red, right? That's kind of similar idea in terms of candle and incandescent, okay? On the old-fashioned incandescent bulb, in the old-fashioned incandescent bulb, they were using tungsten, okay? That's so, old. What? Tungsten. tungsten, yeah. Okay. What's so funny about it? Nothing. Okay. So anyways, uh, he was actually lighting up tungsten in, the, uh, in a vacuum, so that amount of energy allows it to glow so that's how it works it is very it is very uh inefficient okay only about five to ten percent of electricity go to make light most of it was wasted on heat are we good so light from electric discharge Light from electric discharge. What can I, what can you guys say? How does it? Yes. Well, when um, light or the, when electricity passes through gas, that's basically light from electric discharge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So light going through electricity going through a certain gas tube or certain gas, they will produce a certain kind of light. So different kind of neon sign. The neon sign will be, depending on what kind of gas it is, neon, uh, it will produce a certain color. Now, you can have different color uh, neon light sign. They just use a different kinds of gas. However, they still call it neon light. So that's just by electricity going through a tube of gas. Phosphor, phosphorescence, phosphorescence. What's the product? Yes. Okay. So can you say it again? It's I didn't quite get. Mm-hmm. 
So basically, they are kind of glow in the dark. Okay. Now, mind you, they absorb the light energy from ultraviolet light. So they, the material keeps that energy and then later on release that energy. Okay. So anytime you have those glow in the dark stickers, toys, or things like that, they would be, that's how it works. Phospholuminescence. Now, fluorescent, fluorescent, it seems to also absorb ultra, uh, UV light, but then they immediately release it, okay? It doesn't seem to, these seems to hold on to the amount of energy, phosphorescence, uh, fluorescent, they immediately release it. And in terms of the difference is mainly the material. So phosphorescence, they would contain phosphors. Um, but for phosphorescence, here in this case, they are using mercury gas. So the fluorescent tube that is right above our head. Okay. The electric discharge through mercury vapor. Um, you don't need to know the detailed process. You have to ba have basic idea what is which light and what, how are those different light sources, okay? So chemiluminescence, light as a byproduct of a chemical reaction, okay? Light as a byproduct of a chemical reaction. So glow sticks will be an example of that. So glow sticks will be an example of it. Now bioluminescence, that's essentially, that's basically chemiluminescence, but in living organisms, okay? Chemiluminescence, but in living organisms, that's bioluminescence. So certain type of jellyfish does that, okay? Fireflies, for example. Triboluminescence, this one is basically production of light from certain crystals, okay? When the crystals are scratched, crush or rubbed, okay, that will produce a glow. Okay. Questions? So the basics, essent, basics of how the different light sources I, that's where, like, I wasn't sure if we spent quite enough time, so make sure you know that. Light emitting diodes, current flow in one direction using chemical semiconductors, okay? So use semiconductors, light passing through it, okay? And a laser, also this part here, whereas a regular light bulb, incandescent light bulb, the light is spread in all angles. Laser light is very focused, so they use a lot of lenses to focus that one beam of light. So it's emitting in one beam. It's also very high energy and uh, high energy and very intense. You can use it to do precision cutting. Did you guys? Uh, in the tech courses, we we don't have like a laser cutter, right? 
Okay. Um, so in terms of the things that wasn't really as folk, uh, we didn't spend a, as much time on, that's basically it. I'm just going to um, look through. Yeah, the electromagnetic spectrum, what they use for, and things like various example. We talked about that in class before. Uh, production of light. Some information about ray laser. Uh, ray model of light. So, yes, we talk about light can be in the form of wave, but most of what we've been doing in this course has been treating light as if it is a straight line. So we're talking about the ray model of light. Uh, definitely know about transparent and translucent, what those definitions are, as well as opaque object. Okay. So transparent and translucent, light will go through, but translucent, uh, light will go through, but the angles and the directions will be all scattered. So in this case, you can't see behind a translucent uh, glass. Opaque, it doesn't transmit any light at all. Uh, basically, every time you see dashes line like this, you know that's the back side of the mirror. Back side of the mirror. Make sure you know this term, these terminology. People in the back, look up, please. Okay. Make sure you know the these terminologies. Okay. Angle of incidence, reflection. We have the laws of uh, reflection. We talked about that in class a while back. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this part. Reflection and dyslexia. Don't worry about this. You should know how to draw these ray diagrams in terms of a plane mirror and an object, how it goes into your eyes. You should know how to draw these diagrams. Okay. If you remember, we had a hand out like this, okay? And I did ask you guys to draw, for example, this object, how it will look, how it will look in the mirror, and how do you locate the image? You measure the distance. That's, uh, let's just say you pick two points. So this here draws line here, and that's about five centimeters. And from this point here, it's about three and a half centimeters. So on this opposite side, I draw a line. This one's five centimeters. So I extend five centimeters on this side. That's this point. And on here, this is three and a half. So I do three and a half on this other side. One, two, three and a half. So in this case, this would be where the image is. It's a virtual image, so it should be a dash. At that point, we're going to treat the eyeball as a one point. Draw a straight line, dash behind the mirror, straight to in front of the mirror. Straight here. Make sure you have arrows to show where it is. And you do need to draw from this point here. 
on the tip of the arrow, where the tip of the arrow image. So you draw a point, you draw a line from the tip of the object arrow to this point where here where you're showing the light hits the mirror at this at this position and then bounces off. And for this here, the tail of the arrow, you draw a line going from the tail of the arrow to the position where the mirror kind of demonstrates uh, showing the end of the mirror, end of the arrow. Go this way, like that. okay. So make sure you know how to draw these plane diagrams. Uh, not plane diagrams, ray diagrams for plane mirror. In plane mirrors, uh, not in plane mirrors, in ray diagrams, I look for accuracy. Accuracy is the image showing up where it should be, as well as looking at the neatness of the lines and also are the lines there or all the lines there. And in terms of dash or solid, those things also count too. So also, so make sure, bring pencil, bring eraser. You guys good? All right. Yeah, this is recorded, so I'm just moving it right now. Now, in the textbook, they call, they use SALT, but as you might notice, our handouts, they use slightly different acronym. I don't personally care as long as you gave us the four different characteristics, okay? And there will be questions regarding those. Any questions? Okay. Now, curved mirrors, we've been talking about that more recently. So make sure you know what those terms are. Actually, before we get to curved mirrors, I want to talk about refraction. Because refraction, if you remember correctly, there is a calculation part, okay? So refraction is the bending of light. There are different rules of, for refraction, so make sure you look through, that, look through those rules. I do expect you to know the speed of light in vacuum. I do expect you to know the speed of light in vacuum. Uh, I don't expect you to know these numbers, the one in water and acrylic, but you should kind of see like, hey, it's slower in water and even slower in acrylic. Okay, so just a basic idea where, how they compare, but you don't need to know the exact numbers. You should know about these terms, incident ray, angle of incidence, refracted ray, angle of refraction, and the normal line. And total internal reflection, where is it? And total internal reflection, make sure you know that. You're going from, hello, you're talking about light going from a hot, from a medium that's uh, slower medium or higher uh, index of ref uh, refraction. 
to a faster medium or a medium with lower index of refraction. Don't need to worry. You don't need to worry about this diagram, this equation. We're not, we didn't do anything about like calculating the, calculating the angle. Okay. But make sure you know this one. Okay. The N equals C over V. How do you calculate index of ref refraction based on the speed? Make sure you know it. You don't need to memorize this table. You don't need to memorize this table. Um, just know that in vacuum, it is one. And the slow, and in terms of pattern wise, the more optically dense the object is, basically the slower the light will go through that object, the bigger the number will be, okay? So diamond, light will go through diamond a lot slower than if it goes through vegetable oil, so to speak, okay? You do not need to memorize the order of this either, okay? If there's, if a question ever came up that you need these numbers, I will provide them for, to you. Good. Um, so refraction, partial reflection, calculation. Uh, applications of total refraction. So total internal refraction. Know about how it works in diamonds, for example, or gemstones. Fiber optics, fiber optics. There will be a number of questions related to fiber optics, so know that. The triangular prism here, we didn't really quite explicitly going into it, but essentially it's more light goes in because the light goes in not at an angle, but straight line along with the normal. So it will just refract. So the practical uses of it will be something like a periscope, a periscope. So like in a submarine, or did you guys learn about World War One trench warfare? When did you guys learn it? A month ago. Okay, so for those of you who are currently in history, trench for warfare in World War One or two, one, one. So in some ways, if you want to look out of your trench but don't want your head, don't want your head got shot off, use a periscope. So in this case, the light will go here, hit the prism, bounce down, hit another prism, go on here. Okay. Old fashioned binoculars have one, you have two prisms on each side. So you have four prisms. And yeah, we talked about this. We've done this already. Yeah, don't worry about the apparent depth and stuff. Uh, the curved mirrors. Converging or concave mirrors. How do you draw a ray diagram? Make sure you know it. This is more recent. Okay. Also the uses of it. This is important, make sure you know it. This table of the properties of the images, make sure you know it. And in terms of the image in a diverging mirror or convex mirror, make sure you know it. A lot of times you can just, instead of memorizing the table, you can just do a quick sketch of the ray diagram. You should be able to figure it out at that point.
And last but not least, lenses. So lenses, we talked about it last Friday. So you have converging lens, so all the light will go through the focal points. Diverging lens, get all the lights separate through the focal But it will, if you technically draw a line behind, it will converge at that um, focal point in front of the lens. And in terms of the different terminology, different terminology is very similar to the convex or concave mirrors, as well as drawing a ray diagram for the in lenses. Make sure you do some practice, as I said yesterday, uh, yesterday on Friday. I think that's about it. I'm gonna see for this handout that I gave you guys on. So this handout that I gave you guys on Friday, I also gave you guys a simulator, but I'm gonna look for the solution for these ones. Okay, so I'll make it available on, put it on the unit planner, okay? Any questions? I think I just gone through the entire, what would be on the unit test, okay?